Hey everyone, today we are talking about book publishing and let me just get a second because I think we are only live on Facebook and we are not live, I'm sorry, we are only live on YouTube and not everywhere else. Let me just make sure that we are going live everywhere and then, not just on YouTube, and let's see. There we go, we are now streaming everywhere. So if you are watching us right now, let us know where you're watching us from, just so we make sure that we are everywhere for reals. Um, and we are, okay, fantastic. So today we are talking about books, specifically how to publish your book uh, without writing a single word. So as you know, in our, um, format we will have you come on in and actually pick the brain of our expert in real time and our expert today is mr martin cook how are you doing martin i'm doing awesomely thank you ifat <laughs> um, i'm happy to be here thanks for having me yeah I'm, I'm so excited so martin and i this is our third times a charm uh encounter and what we, uh, we started talking about a little bit about my uh, story and my journey. And if you haven't watched that, go to destinypodcast.com, right, Martin? Punto com. Smarter, smarter Destiny Podcast. You abbreviated a little bit. I'm not sure that will quite get you there. <laughs> Smarter, Smarter Destiny, Destiny Podcast. Smarter Destiny Absolutely. Podcast. And find the interview if you want to hear a little bit about my story and how I got to where I did. Um, and then uh, we dove into engagement and actually engaging with your audience and building a loyal audience. And that led to another amazing session where we dove into four easy ways to get raving fans and hungry buyers. And you can find that across the webs as well. And today we are diving actually into Martin's story because it's fascinating how um, software engineer, right? You started with software and you, um, wrote books, this is your second book. So tell me a little bit about that journey from that entrepreneur geeky that you were into self-publishing. Love that, entrepreneur geeky. I'm gonna get business <laughs> cards made up with that. I'm a so, geek. Um, <laughs> oh, I mean, where do I start? Um, as, as we put um, on the bio, I think for this presentation, I started probably, I dabbled in the internet probably for the first time when I was 14. I learned to design websites because uh, I thought it would impress a girl who was uh, designing websites. It didn't, but it didn't work at all. Like it failed hor like horrendously, but I could make websites that didn't <laughs> fail. Um, and so that sort of started me on the journey, uh, making websites. I did that for a bit and then I um, started selling things on websites and then I jumped into social media and learned that I could like buy social media pages like way back when, when everybody saw everything that you posted on your pages. And I started buying loads and loads of Facebook pages up, got to like 20 million um, fans and followers across a bunch of different social profiles. Quickly realized that uh, it's really scary talking to 20 million people in a day and, um, and you'll never keep everyone happy. Um, yeah. Uh, the story I like to tell is uh, I remember like the first time I had this page and it was um, 300,000 people on this particular page and um, and I went to do my very first post and I was terrified. 300,000 people, what do you say? And I said, good morning. All right, I just wanted to test it out. Good morning. Um, and I got a, uh, an Australian guy go, uh, it's evening here, asshole. And I was like, oh, okay fine i can't i genuinely can't keep everybody happy um you know if something like a, saying good morning um this is someone off huh to offend right so <laughs> so i i learned i learned a lot about speaking to people on the masses then graduated um now i have the reach now i could get loads and loads of people onto a website um crashed many a server by sending tons of people to it thinking that the website could handle six thousand people in a minute just coming on things like that learn a lot about that. And then I just thought, well, I've got the people, I've got the traffic, now I need some products. And so I started getting into affiliate stuff and then eventually got into e-commerce um, via Teespring, sold, I mean, you know, I, I probably sold enough t-shirts that there's some, some countries somewhere that I could give every single person in the country a t-shirt from that. Um, and then graduated into my own products. Uh, and so, so, you know, I've got a bunch of, uh, I've gone through a bunch of e-commerce brands. I've got an e-commerce um, mastermind with some really, really smart people. And we all sort of collaborate on a daily basis. We've got a luxury events um, with, with that business. And I've got a software company 
uh, which, yeah, designs software, um, like trust ads, trust message, and trust reach are our three softwares. Um, and then in my spare time, if you like, we've got Smarter Destiny, <laughs> um, which is uh, this poster behind me. We're building an army of enlightened entrepreneurs. Basically, we want to teach people how to make money online, but in an ethical way that actually leaves the world in a better place rather than stepping on people to get rich. Like you shouldn't get rich as a result of someone else getting poor. Right. Um, and, um, and so that's what we teach with Smart Destiny. Through the podcast, we interview fabulous, amazing entrepreneurs like yourself, Ifat, and, um, and we learn their story. We learn why they do what they do. And, um, and so this book, which is what we're going to be talking about today, is the second book that I published under that brand, Smart Destiny. And it's 300 pages of my genuine best work um, to, to help uh, the, the readers uh, make more money from uh, their, their digital business. Uh, through leveraging the power of 1% incremental compounding gains. <laughs> what a mouthful. Um, basically, it's 50 chapters covering in detail a different way that you can make more money. Uh, if you apply just like one chapter, you're going to make a ton more money. You apply two or three, and we did the maths. Three 1% gains is something like 180% increase in, in revenue. It's crazy. Um, and yeah, and so what we're talking about today is how on earth I wrote that book um, so wait, no, before we before we dive into that, um, a lot of people, you know, the reason why they write a book and the reason why they're doing a podcast and the reason why they're doing web shows is because they want to get that audience, right? They want to be in front of like 20 million people and they think that if I have 20 million people, money just going to fall from the trees and I don't have to do anything because they're just going to buy everything that I sell. So let's talk about that a little bit because you had the audience right ahead of time and then you started creating products what led to like okay let me now spend my time doing podcasts that for free right where i'm not i'm just giving value and i'm not selling anything or let me write a book where i'm not making any profit let's talk about that for a second sure so um i'm the guy that you <laughs> you're walking down the street i'm walking down the street and i hear someone say something like they, they they're expressing a problem that they've got I'm the guy that can't keep quiet, right? I'm the guy that will be like, oh, couldn't help but over here. Um, actually, have you tried this, right? And I get into trouble all the time for that. But I'm just, you know, I just want to help. Like, if I can um, offer some kind of help, I get a good feeling from that. And that's what I do. And so um, there's a combination, really. So the book was, look, I've got a lot of things in my brain, and I want to get those things out of my brain. And we're in a really noisy world where there's gurus clogging up your news feed, you know, people that can't teach, right? Yeah. These kind of people <laughs> that, that um, have figured out that they can make a lot more money by pretending they know what they're talking about and selling a course than, than anything else. And so um, I've got a ton of stuff in my brain. Um, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to put it out in a book. A book's like a business card. And I'm going to get into I'm stamping on, I'm touching on my presentation a little bit here. But a book's like a business card where you can kind of, demonstrate that you actually know what you're talking about up front and yeah. um, and so I had a lot of lot of stuff in my head I wanted to just get it out I found I discovered a way to get it out without actually having to manually type which I'm uh, you know I, I touch on that but I, I'm just I'm just terrible it's my idea of torture <laughs> make me type an essay if you want to get all my secrets right if that's the torture that will work so well for me um, and so the books for so that. So as you're typing your secrets, you'll be like, you're like, oh no, I don't want to do this. Let me type this up. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and the podcast, I just love um, uh, just connecting with interesting people. Being an entrepreneur, particularly a digital entrepreneur, it's a lonely, it's a lonely journey. And um, you know, I just love connecting with interesting people, hearing their stories. Um, and so it's something that I would do for free. And there's not many things like in life where, you, you know, if you look inside yourself, go, would I do this completely for free? And the answer with this one was yes, for, which is really lucky because we don't actually monetize the podcast in any way. In fact, it cost me about, I don't know, 80 to 100 bucks per episode to get it like edited and, 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 and out there on the socials. But um, I just really enjoy doing it. I connect with great people, hear their story. We chat before and after the show about various bits and bobs. Um, at the very least, I can travel to pretty much any country in the world and there'll be someone there who I know who, you know, show me a local restaurant that's good or something. So it's all good. Yeah. So uh, before we dive into how Martin created this, guys, if you actually want to come in, pick Martin's brain in real time, this is the link. 
I'm thatgeek.com forward slash live. Hop on over and click the pink button right below the video and you'll be able to come in and get all your questions answered as well. So before we start, I wanna tell you guys about this book for a second because we're gonna show you how you can get your own free copy. But this is not a fluffy book. Uh, even though, you know, you might be like, wow, you didn't write a single word, how did that happen? And I really wanna dive into that. But before we get in there, I wanna, I wanna share something with you that I really connected uh, with when I started reading this. And it's because, um, Martin, you've been in the internet marketing world since forever, it sounds, and I've been there since the beginning. And there's so many smoke and mirrors uh, and so much fakeness and so much, you know, scam that I love this episode. Like it's right there, it's not episode, right there in the introduction, you say, beware. Let me read that to you. He says, beware. If you're in the internet marketing space, it feels, oh, let's stop. Our industry is broken and it impacts you both as responsible business selling online and as a consumer purchasing online. Wherever you turn, there's a get rich quick solution or take this pill and melt fat or a three step overnight winning formula for happy marriage and so on. So if you're in the internet marketing space, it feels worse. True. We're in the age of the guru. My newsfeed is clogged with people selling snake oil, sitting in rented Bentleys or Lamborghinis, displaying screenshots of failed businesses and telling you a quick solution to success. I sort of get it. I mean, unfortunately, as consumers, we might take people more seriously if they, are, if they stood in front of a big, bright <laughs> Ferrari next to their beautiful and extremely fake wife, <laughs> I love that, or a swimming pool of $100 bills. We shouldn't fall for it, but we sometimes do. And then you went and created an ad where you filmed a silly video with a blue space hopper representing Big Blue, AKA Facebook, and you bought $10,000 of fake stage dollar, $100 bills to create mm -hmm. the shoot. So, and you said that that ad went actually very well. So yeah, yeah, it, did. it did. So, uh, so I want to share a few things. One, the book is not fluffy. Two. There's a lot of BS out there and both Martin and I are aware of the BS. So what he's going to share with you today is not part of that. It's the part that you actually can take, implement and get a book done. I think you'd got it done in like, oh, let me see. <laughs> I'm that geek that come forward slash live. That's why. <laughs> so it's not fake. It's all real. It's happening in real time. And you guys can come in and actually ask us any questions that you want unscripted and see whether or not uh, we're full of it or we're giving you the real truth. So let's, uh, um, tell me a second a bit about that ad with the fake <laughs> money. <laughs> so, yeah, so as, as you said in the book, um, I was following along actually as you were reading the outline. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we see it all the time in our newsfeed, right? Someone in front of a yellow Ferrari um, or with a bikini clad woman or a bunch of money or whatever going, I'm awesome, listen to me and buy my stuff. And um, <laughs> I mean, that's not really me. And, um, and, so, and anyway, so I, I thought, right, do you know what? I've always used humor. Um, I like humor. Um, I, think, I think people take life too seriously. And so I, I enjoy humor works. Yep. messing around. And um, so I was like, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot something. I just did it in my kitchen. Um, I had my uh, fiance then wife now um, filming it. We'd, we'd set up some lights and I'd, I'd sort of got an idea of what I was gonna say in advance, um, like a little sort of storyboard. And it was sort of talking about how, you know, um, we set up our ads and we think they're great. And then, you know, Big Blue comes and nom, 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 <laughs> eats all our money. And so I had these fake dollar, like hundred dollar bills, stage money. You can just look at it on Amazon, just type in like fake money and you can get like wads of cash, which I'm sure some of the gurus know that already. Um, and I, and I, so I had like a plate of money and I had this, this blue space hopper um, representing Facebook, Big Blue, which is what people call it sometimes, um, and just sort of going nom nom nom, like eating the money, and uh, yeah, so it's just it was just a fun little thing, and then right at the end of the clip, I like sort of bounce off, and it's not a full sized space hopper. <laughs> this this is a small space hopper, like I'm sort of bouncing off with like my radio <laughs> mic sort of dangling like a tail behind me, and uh, yeah, I mean it was a lot of fun to shoot. It was funny. Um, we we ran it on Facebook, we ran it on YouTube, and um, I don't know, we got something, I, 
three quarters of a million views, something something like that. And um, and yeah, on on, on uh, YouTube as well. I think it hit something like a forty percent. Like it was shown as an advert. Like you know those annoying yeah. adverts on YouTube that you never want to watch. Forty percent of the people that saw it actually watched it, um, which was pretty cool. Um, and suggested that maybe it wasn't you know that irritating, um, but uh, it wasn't. And actually, yeah, I think if you guys actually want to go see it go check out like uh i'll put that in uh in the comments below so let's okay, dive i'm glad you've got a link to it because i i don't know, i don't even know where it is right now but yeah, yeah i did a little search on youtube and i was like oh i need to see what that fake money looked like <laughs> so let's dive into how do you self-publish a book before we uh before we self-publishing right like how do you write it right and how do you get uh kevin harrington to give you an introduction and um and all that good stuff so Share your screen and we'll dive in. And guys, again, if you want to join us in real time, I'm thatgeek.com forward slash live and we'll get to see you. And Martin, off to you. There we go. Okay. Um, so thank you very much for that introduction. So yeah, so this this book, uh, this, this um, presentation is called How to Write a Best-Selling Book Without Actually Writing a Word. And if you're just listening to the audio of this, the first write is in like little bunny air quote things um, because I didn't write a single word and we're going to get into that. So in this training, there's me um, holding the book. Um, I look very happy about it as well. Actually, I should probably get a photo that smiles. Um, so how to write a 300 um, page book. Wait, let me go. Just, I'm going to control of my computer here. There we go. How to write a 300 page book without actually writing a single word. Um, and I'm going to tell you how I actually created this book during dead time. So it wasn't actually like additional time strain on my day. I'm going to show you how I leveraged dead time to actually write this book. I'm going to go through how I landed Kevin Harrington as a forward. So he's one of the original sharks on Shark Tank. Worth for like, he's responsible. His companies are responsible for something like $20 billion in revenue, something ridiculous. Um, the guy is, is a smart, successful dude um how we managed to sign up over 300 people uh, just in the pre-launch um and how you know ultimately we sold thousands of copy copies at a profit and so um and, and by the way at any point this this link is a special link that i made for you guys smarterdestiny.com forward slash geek and that will actually uh take you into the book funnel where you can actually get yourself a free copy of the book all i ask is that you um kick in a little bit for shipping because genuinely the book itself um you know cost a fair amount of uh, money it did take some time to produce and just shipping it alone particularly if you're in somewhere like australia or the us actually cost me more than i charge for shipping even so it genuinely is uh the book is free just cover the, the cost of shipping um or almost cover the cost of shipping so why write a book okay well first off it proves that you know your stuff and so this by the way this image on the right is actually a business card looking and it's just at the right angle that it kind of looks 3d but it's not it's a business card that looks like a book, okay and the reason i'd use that photo is because um i like to look at books nowadays as business cards um as i said before jumping into this presentation a business card a book is like a business card in this noisy age where everyone's going i'm the expert i'm the expert i'm the best when you kind of just throw down a book and just say hey you know take a look at that skim through it um use it to you know wedge your table so that it doesn't go wonky it's not rocky what use the book however you want right i've already written this this is my best work i'm very proud of it um give it a read if any of it resonates with you then let's talk okay like if if i was selling my services i don't sell my services as a, as a consultant but it's more you know i've got a lot of stuff that i want to put out there to help people and um i know that i'm you know I know that my intentions are genuine. I know that other people's aren't necessarily genuine. So I've got a book where it's like, hey, your risk is like six six bucks for shipping. Um, you're going to hold a 300 page book in your hand. Um, it, I know it's genuinely good. We've had hundreds of positive reviews come in from it now to, you know, which really does um, confirm that. And uh, yeah, you know, at least then you might um, sort of go, huh, actually, this this kind of makes a lot of sense. Uh, so also why you might want to write a book is, is it's actually a challenge and people respect that. Okay. 
um, you know, to get to the point where you actually have a published book that people can hold in their hands is impressive. And books, as a result, have quite a high perceived value um, there as well. I mean, let's face it, it's just ink on paper, um, but it's the condensed knowledge of like a decade of learning, right? Typically books are like um, at least a decade of experience in there. Um, you know, if you go onto the Amazon bestseller list or something. Um, and so, you know, you, it's it's got value because you can learn a lot and you can very, very quickly um, learn, you know, catch up and learn so much just by by reading. I'm, a, I'm an avid reader. Um, it's great for lead generation if, if that's your business. It doesn't matter what kind of business you run. Um, if you're an expert and you're positioning yourself as an expert, having a book will definitely help you in that. It doesn't matter what the niche is um, you know demonstrating up front that you know what you're talking about and you've published a book on it really does position you um, as an expert and thus you can leverage that for lead generation and of course all of that content that you put together in the book is yours and you can repurpose that over and over what i mean is you can uh, record videos on the chapters you can um, publish blog posts that are the chapters you can take little excerpts you can chat about it with people you can do all kinds of stuff so pretty cool. Right. So that's why um, I'd suggest writing a book is quite a cool thing to do. Um, and then I know we went through it a little bit, but um, just so you know who the heck I am, because we haven't met, here's a blurry photo of me on stage. Um, basically, I've built and scaled um, and exited multiple six and seven figure e-commerce stores. I've coached thousands of students on advertising, e-commerce entrepreneurship across 38 countries, spoken from stages across multiple continents, and personally spent more than $5 million on Facebook advertising alone. And my company, TrustAds.io, my software, TrustAds.io, um, it's a advertising, it's an automation uh, tool that helps you get more profit out of your advertising while spending less time. And through our clients there, we've managed over $100 million in advertising spend. So we've got a fair amount of data on selling online. Okay, so that's a little bit about me. And here is my first book. Okay, so in 2017, I actually wrote a book. And once again, I'm using those air quotes. And the reason I'm using those air quotes is because it was, a, whilst it was a good book, it was very short. And that was because I wrote it and I hate writing. I'm not a manual dude. And I discovered on this journey with this book, which I told everybody I was going to write. And so I had to absolutely do it. Um, I hated every second. I was trying to find uh, just a spare bit of time in my busy day um, to sort of churn out a chapter and, um, you know, I, it was so much effort. It, it was, it wasn't really even a book. It was like a pamphlet. It had probably 50 pages. You could read it in about an hour and a half. Um, and by the time I'd written what I just, just decided was the final chapter, I didn't even want to proofread it. I was so fed up of writing. And so I released it as a PDF. Um, and I, and I just gave away that PDF for free um, to my list. And then for an entire year, I just felt regret. I just felt absolute regret that that was not my best work. If people were judging me by that first book, it wasn't, it wasn't my best work, right? I wasn't proud of it at all. Um, and, and so I was like, well, I want to do something about it. And so the link to this first book um, is, is at the bottom of the screen. It's the digital download. Um, if you want to see it, as I said, it, it's good. It's just short, okay? And, and it took a tremendous amount of effort. And so what I decided to do was do something about it. I don't know, that's just an image. I was wondering if that was a video actually. So I decided to do something about it. I wasn't happy with the book. I wanted to create something truly awesome. I wanted to produce something that was absolutely my best work. Um, and that's hard nowadays, right? To just put a label on something and say, that's my best work. It gives you no point, right? If someone t tells you that it's bad, you can't sort of hide behind, ah, well, I wasn't trying that hard. I, I tried hard, right? It's my best work, okay? Um, uh, and so I wanted to produce something that I was proud of, right? But as we know, I hated writing. I've mentioned that once or twice already, okay? I knew from the first book it was a struggle from start to finish, and I knew what the outcome would be if I decided to write a second book um, in exactly the same way that I wrote the first one, okay? All manual and stuff. So I started researching, all right? I knew the problem wasn't having the information in my brain. I knew I had the information in my brain, um, but I just didn't have the time or the inclination to actually, you, you know, use a keyboard and write that information down into a form of a book. So I started researching ways to write a book without actually needing to write a book, okay? And so I was I was sort of thinking along the lines of maybe maybe I can get Siri on my side, you know, Siri, the iPhone assistant. Maybe I could, maybe Siri will help me out. Um, but uh, that wasn't the solution, but um, I did actually find the solution, okay? And it was, it was frustrating, I, it took a long time to search, but I did find the solution 
And um, that's kind of lucky because now I can actually present to you guys the start to finish way um, that I managed to publish a 300 page book. So are you guys ready for this? I can only, I can only see one actual face. So Stuart, give me a thumbs up. Are you ready for this? Yes, Stuart is. I love your hat, Stuart. And um, M Masana Bria is also ready for this. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I love it when, um, when I get a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Right. So where to start. Okay, so first off, this uh, this image is a digital image. Whoa, I'm going to get into how you can actually mock up things like this. Um, it looks pretty real, doesn't it? But that was actually a digital mock up of the book. But um, the reason I've, I'm showing a digital mock up at this point is because at this point, I knew I wanted to write a book, but I didn't even have the answer to uh, a simple question like how thick should the book be, right? Something where you just assume, okay, well, I'm just going to write until I'm done. But actually, it was important to me that my book was thick. I wanted to get loads and loads of info, lots and lots of information there. But I didn't want it to be too thick that it um, like went into the next postal bracket. Okay, what I mean, they're like shipping brackets. And so in the UK, where I knew I'd be shipping it from, the thickness of a large letter, okay, which is what the Royal Mail Postal Service defines as, um, you know, uh, by thickness, is two. 0.5 centimeters, okay, which is about an inch. Um, a large that's 2.5 centimeters. So I was like, right, I need to write a book which is as close to 2.5 centimeters, but not over in terms of depth as possible. And so, you know, I'm like, wow, that, that's not something that Google can help you with, by the way, folks. So, you know, I've got a good bookshelf. I looked at the, um, all the books on there. I went to a local library and I looked at similar size books um, to figure out how many pages makes up 300, 300, um, sorry 2.5 centimeters and um so all that searching you guys don't need to do the searching now because i can tell you the answer i found that about 300 pages was the sweet spot and if you really want to geek out on it it's the name of the show um it's uh, at something like 100 gsm right which is the thickness of the paper right <laughs> and it seemed that of those 300 page books that um that i was looking at most of them had around about 50 chapters and that also seemed about right to me 50 sounds like a good number in terms of chapters and in terms of information and so there it was um there's the maths of of what i'm setting out to do and this is important i'm setting out to write a 300 page book with 50 chapters okay so 300 pages um we can assume as you can see on the right hand side that every chapter heading page about half of it's going to be um, you know, like the title and an image and a quote. So I can minus 25 of those pages because they're basically blank. I can minus another 25 pages because I had images throughout. So really I'm writing 250 pages. Okay, so that number's coming down and which is important to me because to be honest, looking at 100,000 words sounds really, really scary, okay? Um, so now I'm only writing 250 pages. I Googled quickly online and found that um, an average uh, page has about 300 words. I also counted some, <laughs> if that's five minutes of my life, I'm never gonna get back, but I actually counted words on a page in some, some books that I had to make sure. And so I realized that if I'm writing 250 pages, each page has 300 words on it, it's about 75,000 words. And if I'm gonna write 50 chapters, that means 1500 words per chapter. Are you guys following on with the maths? Did you expect? I did not expect this at all. I was like, you write a book, you never think about like how long it needs to be, how heavy it needs to be for shipping, how many words in every chapter. Like, I just thought, okay, I'll just write the chapters and whatever happens, happens. <laughs> yeah, and that's how I approached the first book. And, and so I was like, I'm not gonna do that again. I'm gonna use some kind of logic behind this, all right? And so um, remember I was doing all my research, I was searching online and um, and I found a way to write a book without a writer book. And you probably guessed this folks, but what I discovered was that you can dictate your entire book, okay? And when I was um, learning this, I also um, learned that you can actually speak, and of course we know this, but you can speak much faster than you can write, okay? So like a really good secretary nowadays who types every day might write maybe 90 words per minute, okay? Something like that. You can speak without too much effort, 150 words per minute, okay? And so each chapter, I told you a minute ago, each chapter we're aiming at 1500 words. It means that 1500 words can be dictated in just 10 minutes, okay? So each chapter, I can actually write it um, in 10 minutes, right? And so um, if you're dictating it, then uh, what dictating means is obviously um, speaking into a microphone and then you can get that transcribed, which means getting those that that, that sound clip into words again. Um, someone else can do that, right? That's what I figured. Someone else 
can just can transcribe the recording because that sounds like a lot of work to me and something that I don't want to do. So Martin, quick question. Uh, when, when did you write the book? How many years ago? Oh, this book was, um, I think it came out the end of last year, maybe December time, 2018. Okay, so we now have AI that basically transcribes it, right? Pretty cheaply, 10 cents a, se 10 cents a minute. Um, and so you write an entire chapter in 10 minutes, sends it to an AI, they transcribe it in a minute, cost you 10 minutes, cost you a dollar. Um, so you get, <laughs> so the cost of creating 50 chapters is 50 bucks and your time, if you will. Nice. Well, so I'm going to go into how I um, did that. And uh, yeah, yeah let's I, do it. I, I used a slightly more expensive option, but the AI option sounds great. Um, but anyway, so I was like, okay, so um, this sounds really cool. I can dictate my entire book, um, but let's let's just sanity check this for a second. Why should you dictate? Okay, well, number one for me is you don't need to type because uh, you know I said I hate typing. Um, if you if you're not typing, you don't need a keyboard. Okay, so now you don't really need to be in front of your computer. So now you can produce a book without being in front of a physical computer. Fantastic. Um, dictation only needs a microphone um, and you've got one of those on your phone. So you can technically do it on the phone. You can talk much faster than you can type. You can talk whilst doing other things. And this is important um, because essentially if you're able to talk whilst doing other things like talk and walk would be an example, right? Um, you can potentially write your book during otherwise dead time, which in my case, um, I looked at the sort of things that I'm doing each day. And in my case, it was whilst walking my dog, Winston. Okay. And so meet Winston. He's a um, pug Pomeranian. I wanted a dog which had a little bit more of a snout than a pug, but I love pugs. Um, and I love walking him, right? It's not, it's something that I'll never outsource. I'm never going to pay someone to walk my dog. I enjoy it. Okay. I love walking Winston and often I'll use the time whilst I'm walking him to listen to podcasts or make calls. Okay. I walk him every day, usually for at least 40 minutes. Therefore, if each chapter could be dictated in 10 minutes, potentially I could churn out four chapters per walk, right? Meaning that in 13 dog walks, technically, um, I could dictate my entire 300 page book, right? Pretty cool. Okay. So, um, so that was the dead time that I'd identified. Other dead time could be in the shower. It could be whilst you're cooking. It could be whilst you're cleaning. It could be um, oh, whilst you're shopping, um, all kinds of times, um, whilst you're driving, whilst you're traveling. There's plenty of times where you can talk um, if you just, you know, got a microphone, like Bluetooth headset. I love it. And you know what's funny is like if you do not have a dog, this will get you in shape. <laughs> so you can actually start finding reason that like if you needed a reason to start walking and going the distance, writing a book might be it. <laughs> Yeah, I should maybe add that to the presentation, like how I dictated a 300 page book and lost. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so let's jump into planning your book. OK, so we've got a basic idea of how to do it. Um, and so basically, the first thing you need to figure out is what topic are you an expert on? OK, and understand that expert doesn't mean what you think it might or what you might think it means. Expert means just knowing at least a little bit more than others. OK, if you know just a little bit more than the average person about something that actually, by definition, makes you an expert because you're in the minority of people that know that much. OK, so don't stress out about ah, I'm not qualified to write a book. You can always add to your um, to your um, existing experience and knowledge with plenty of research. OK, um, then you want to be asking yourself, will your chosen topic add enough value to others that they will pay money for it? OK, there's niches out there which just, you know, uh, it's unlikely that you're going to get money for it. Um, you do need to recover your costs. Okay. You need to recover your costs on producing the book. There's going to be some time and some, a little bit of spend. Um, and so, you, you know, you need to be able to get some money back at least for it. Uh, you need to ask yourself, will your topic solve customer problems? It's really good. If your book actually solves problems, most books out there kind of do, even if it's the problem of not feeling tired or the problem of needing entertainment. Okay. Is there enough of a market to buy your book? Okay. Basically what I'm describing here is niche selection, which I actually cover in this video it's on my youtube channel that little link down below which you can screenshot the screen or something um, will take you straight to that youtube video okay um and it, it basically goes into niche selection and how to find a great niche all right so now we jump into chapter ideas and so remember i wanted to do 50 chapters okay and so i started just by noting down my ideas that i had right this book is a book on e-commerce it talks about how to scale your e-commerce business past seven figures in revenue okay because i've done that a few times and i know what i'm talking about 
right? So I was noting down ideas about traffic and sales and conversions and all kinds of stuff. I'm just scribbling it down. I'm not filtering. I'm just writing it all down on a piece of paper, okay? I'm looking at chapters in other books, right, in my niche. So I'm looking at e-commerce books. Um, you can jump onto Amazon. They'll give you a preview of what's in the contents. And I'm getting inspired by the kind of um, things that are written in other books. I'm searching on um, blog articles to see what those articles, like the topics of them. I'm looking on YouTube for videos in my niche to see what those topics, those videos are on. I'm looking at reviews on Amazon. This isn't so good for my niche, but it's great for other niches. You can look at products that the people in your niche are buying and then look at reviews on those products to see why people are liking those products. Okay, and you might be inspired for chapter ideas there. So start scribbling them down or dictating them and aim for about 75 um, ideas, 75 plus ideas, because you're going to filter some out later. All right. So I wanted 50. So I aimed at 75. And then what you want to do is you want to get those cha um, those chapters and sort them by theme. OK, so this is this is like the first part of the content for the book that we're talking about, which is linked at the bottom. So I guess you know, slash geek. And you can see that, um, you know, so scaling the lie we've been told, crystallizing your vision, tightening your target and so on. Those are my chapter ideas. Right. Well, actually, they're the final chapters. And I started sort of grouping them by theme. OK, so all of the ideas that I had that kind of relate to scaling, I put them under a scaling heading, all the ones related to brand building, I put under brand building, all the to targeting and so on. OK, and so I've now got um, seven themes in my book. Um, actually, I think it's eight because there's more on the other side of this content page. Um, and um, I've sorted the chapters under it. OK, and so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a similar number of chapters under each theme. Um, and I'm trying to ensure that when you combine all of those themes, you're creating a really good framework that solves the problems of your target customers. OK, and so this is just a scribble exercise, folks. It's really not as complicated as I'm probably making it sound. Um, but you're scribbling down ideas of things that you could write about and then putting them under um, these, these headings. OK, so now you're probably thinking, right, OK, so I've got these ideas for chapters. How do I um, talk about that chapter for 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm dictating, I want 1500 words. I know that's going to take me about 10 minutes. Um, how do I even get started? Okay, because you know, you're out and about now, you're walking your dog, you've got your phone out, um, or you've got Bluetooth headphones in like I did. And, um, and now you need you've got the challenge of talking for 10 minutes, which goes really quickly, but you do need something to talk about. So this is how I structured just about every chapter in my book. First part of the chapter, I talked about a story that demonstrates the talking points of the chapter. OK, humans learn through stories. Right. If I start telling you the way you um, increase your conversion rate on your store is you do a split test on this, you're going to zone out. If I tell you about my friend, Justin, who um, did an experiment for one of his clients, he jumped in and he got frustrated and then he tried this and then accidentally found that by changing the button color, da 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 da. Um, it's a bit more engaging because humans learn through stories. So I started every single chapter with a story that's going to demonstrate my talking points. Next up, I then jumped into a section on actual actionable, actionable advice. Now that I've engaged my reader with a story, now I'm talking about actual advice. Now I'm saying, hey, so maybe you can um, check out some split tests. Maybe you can play with color or font or um, look at this or look at your competitors or try out this or that. Right? Actionable advice relating to the story that users can actually apply to their business because a story is great, but also um, users want you know action points that they can actually um, you know use in their business and apply. Then um, the next bit of the chapter is a recap. It's 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 merging the story and the actionable advice together. You know, and so that's just like we learned with Justin when he was testing the things that when he did that, and that's why I'm advising this. Okay, simple. It's a recap, and then finally. This isn't something that I necessarily like, but when I did research, I found that actually quite a high percentage of people enjoy at the end of the chapter in the book, having some homework, some action points. So go, go away, do your research, look at 10 sites in your need, you know, that kind of stuff, like a bit of homework, some checkpoints to really cement the knowledge. And it makes a lot of sense. And so I finished up most of my chapters with some action points, if it made sense, for how they could apply the teachings of the chapter. So now I've broken 10 minutes down into four points. So now each point's just two and a half minutes, right? That, now we're really, really getting short. Two and a half minutes is what, like 150 seconds, okay? It's not very long. And so let me um, apply this chapter structure to a weird niche. Let's apply it to dog 
haircuts, right? A book on dog haircuts, okay? So that we can practice what we preach here, okay? So remember, we want to start with a story. So one chapter might be a story about how I, uh, or about when I accidentally dyed a poodle green. Whoops, I haven't done that. Um, I, this is a Google image. This isn't like <laughs> my handiwork and I've snapped a photo of it and the pissed off owners in the background going, God, it's dyed my poodle green. Um, so, uh, so I can start my chapter about a story about when I accidentally dyed a poodle green. Now I can give some advice about being careful about choosing dyes, learn from my mistakes, about choosing the, the hair dye and mixing them properly. Um, and then I can recap about the story and the advice, the first two points, and then I can give some homework to research whether um, the preferred dyes that you're using to dye your dogs um, inc include certain ingredients or whatever. I know nothing about dyeing, um, dyeing dogs' haircuts. I would never do that, but this is an example if you're writing this book, okay? Now, so you've got four points written down, um, you know, bullet, bullet pointed out so that you can speak about it on your, you know, in your, in your dead time period. But maybe you, you're like, ah, Martin, I could do with a couple more points. All right, fine. Let's flesh it out even further. So point one, we've got a story about when I accidentally dyed a poodle green and a couple of bullet points here um, about, um, about what I would talk about. So in the story, I'm going to cover the day of the week, the location, the time, how I was feeling, how it's a long shift. I accidentally grabbed the wrong dye. Um, the customer was so angry. OK, so now I fleshed out that point one into four little sub points. Advice about being careful about choosing dyes and mixing them properly. Check the label. Be careful of a certain ingredient and why. Then we've got the recap. What was I thinking about when I was working? Why we should try and avoid the angry customers? And then the homework, okay? So I've just fleshed it out so that, um, you know, we've already got it down to two and a half minutes per point on average as in terms of talking. But if that's still daunting, we can add some little sub points and you'll find that you talk way more than 10 minutes. So Martin, a uh, quick question about that one. So uh, you're writing all these things down and you're kind of like brainstorming before you go on the walk and then you carry that like piece of paper with you and you talk about it as yeah, you uh, yeah, pretty, dictate as you walk. Pretty much. So I use an app called Evernote. I love Evernote. I'm an avid Evernoter. Um, it's an app that you can access online, on your computer, on your phone. And you, when you write a note, it's on all of those devices like instantly and you can share notes and stuff. And so that's where I scribble my, my um, bullet points. Um, but yeah, I was going You're out. You're all digital. Four bullet points. <laughs> yeah, I was going out. So I had my AirPods in um, and my phone ready with these um, these four bullet points, um, and then I would attack it. And what I would what I used. You talked about AI, which is great, much better than this. But I use Rev.com's app. So Rev.com is a transcribing service that I've used. Their accuracy is phenomenal in terms of you know actually interpreting my British accent and, and writing the words that I intend them to say. Of course, there's a few words as well, which were intended for my dog, like, there's a good boy, what a good poo you've just done, and don't sniff that person's leg, and so on. But, um, you know, for the majority of what I was saying, of course, was for the book. So I use Rev.com. They charge $1 per minute um, of transcribing. They're very accurate. Um, and I use their app because the second you finish recording, you can just send it to them instantly and they, they send, um, send you back your transcription pretty quickly. You could alternatively just use like an audio recording app on your phone and then separately upload it to your whatever service you use, your transcribing service. So I use the bullet point notes on my phone for reference. Rev.com would then transcribe um, the, the audio and then um, they, you can set it up so it sends it to a Dropbox folder. Okay, So they send it to a Dropbox folder. I share that Dropbox folder with my, my colleague. So in my case, the person who was writing up this transcription was um, my head of marketing, Grace, because, um, uh, well, I'll get into that. She basically wrote up the transcription, removed the things which were clearly intended for my dog, removed the ums and the ahs and the, oh, what the hell am I talking about today? What was that last thing? You know, all of the stuff where it's not meant for the book. Uh, she wrote that up in Google Docs so I can monitor along, you know, Google Docs, you can, multiple people can read it at the same time. And for me, the bonus um, of getting her to do it rather than just paying someone for Upwork or finding any kind of proofreader, copywriter, book editor, all of these professions can easily do this job, right? They're just they're just proofreading what's being transcribed and, 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 you know, making it nice. The bonus for me was she learned all about e-commerce marketing at the same time that she was producing the book for me. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving her training. My staff is, you know, my member of staff is now smarter. Okay. And then the next thing. So once we've got it on Google docs, she's then graduating to Scrivener. So Scrivener is a WordPress processor for specifically for book writing. So it's like Microsoft word or Google docs, but specifically for word writing. 
I'm not going to get into this um, too much. YouTube is your friend. If you have any questions about it, it's really intuitive. But the point of Scrivener is that um, when, when you've produced your book on it, it outputs um, your book into the various different formats that you'll need across the web for creating an ebook or creating a PDF or creating um, a physical manuscript. And you only have to then make your book once and then you can what's known as compile it into different formats okay and so any question that you might have on Scrivener has been answered um, on YouTube okay so that's why I say YouTube is your friend that and it's a short presentation so now we've got a book um, and now we need to uh, pre-launch that book by building hype so I recommend Kartra as the funnel builder okay so Kartra is like click funnels it's a bit cheaper and I prefer it personally there's a link below um, smartdestiny.com forward slash funnel builder which will take you to the to Kartra where you can try it out I think it's like two weeks for free or something like that um, but basically in my pre-launch I created a simple lead capture form um, and then I jumped onto social media and told as many people as I could that my book's coming out and things that I was excited about and, you know, the chapter that I just finished writing. Um, I didn't tell, obviously, I wasn't saying dictated at that point, you know, the, the chapter I'd just written um, and what it was about and why I was excited about it. I was just talking about it, okay? And so I create this quick form where I collect their name, the phone, and the email. I recommend keep, you know, collecting phone numbers as well. Um, because it might be that you want to call up these pre-launch people or text them or something when you actually launch. Okay. So you might as well grab that. But essentially if you are going to do it like me, which is actually giving away free copies, um, then, um, you know, it's quite a strong, compelling reason, right? Like, you know, claim your free copy. Okay. Like, you know, I've just spent all this time writing a book. I'm going to give it to you for free. That's a really, really strong, compelling reason for someone to fill out the form. Martin, hold on a second. So a uh, quick question. Are you releasing chapter by chapter to those people or are you waiting until your entire book is done and then you're sending it to them? Oh, no. So um, I'm just talking. So so um, I'm telling as many people that I've got a book coming out. OK. And so that gets old real fast. Like, hey, guys, I've got a book coming out. Hey, guys, I've got a book coming out. It gets old real fast. Right. So if you're looking for things that you can fresh ways to tell people you've got a book coming out, you can say, hey, I've just finished writing another chapter for my book that is coming out on blah, blah. I'm really excited about this chapter because it tells you blah, 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 blah. Right. And so, you know, now you've got 50 chapters, that's potentially 50 different posts you could do, which are all fresh and unique um, and compelling and point to your lead capture form. I didn't do anywhere near as many posts as that. I probably should have. Um, <laughs> but uh, you but know. time and life and, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> life. Um, and I couldn't do that on dog walks. <laughs> that, that one. So um, so now I've pre launched it now. You're writing your book and during this period, you also want to keep in the back of your mind that um, maybe you want a foreword. Okay, so a foreword's um, a really, really talented expert person that's kind of in your the field and topic of the book um, who writes about themselves and their successes and then applies it to your book. Okay, so Kevin Harrington, super, super this. He teaches and mentors entrepreneurs. He loves, um, you know, teaching entrepreneurs to give more than you get. And he can see that through the words written in this book by Martin, All right? Okay, as an example, right? So that's how a foreword is typically structured. Um, it's completely optional, but recommended. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking to get a foreword, ideally that person should be impressive and influential because they'll actually help you sell more copies. Um, they should be relevant to the topic as well. Um, it would have been no good um, to me to get like, a, I don't know, professional footballer um, because, you know, what do they know about digital marketing? Um, so what you want to do is just research people that match that criteria online, make a list of your dream 50 people that's in your, you know, that you could maybe just about reach and get hold of, um, and then contact them, which really sounds scary, but it's not. Um, in fact, I love LinkedIn for this because on LinkedIn, you can really, you can find everybody and at the very least you can send them a connection request with a message and, um, and also on their website, they'll have contact forms and, um, yeah, just stay focused. Um, and, you know, if you want to contact 50 people, break it down to at least um, 10 people per day. And then when you're reaching out to them, um, just reach out to it. It's, it's a very short message, you know, brief message, complimentary, compliment them about something that they've done, they've produced that you like, right? And keep the message to the point. Um, 
And remember that it's an honor to be asked to be a forward, right? So it's not as hard as you think. You're not really asking them for a favor. You're going to be selling however many copies of your book, and your book is positioning, is positioning them even more as an expert because they're the forward on your book. So remember, it's not actually um, a tremendous you know, like, um, inconvenience for them. Um, at this point, each person that you reach out to who responds will have different questions, and so you just need to answer them as best as possible and as honestly as possible. And then if you get yourself in a nice but difficult situation where you've got multiple people from your Dream 50 um, saying yes, giving you yeses, yes, I'd like to be a forward, um, just you know, be brutal and pick the best person for the job. And um, you could even be um, a little bit unconventional like I was and actually have two forwards. So in addition to Kevin Harrington as a forward on my book, I also have this um, guy by the name of Xavier De Petta, who is a phenomenally successful um, guy. He was one of the 25 smartest teens on the planet, named by Forbes, and he was Times Magazine's 30 Under 30. I think I've muddled those two magazines up, but he's an impressive dude, but he hasn't got the notoriety and influence that Kevin Harrington has yet, but I wanted him on my book. So I had two four words. Um, and so um, that's how I got Kevin Harrington. Yeah, so quick question. So. Um... What's the benefit of you? I mean, are you just tying your name into Kevin Harrington's name and by having him as a, a forward on your book? Like, what's the real value behind it? So um, these four words, these people will, you know, you're sending them a copy of your manuscript, right? So right. they're not going to just put, apply their name to anything, you know, that's, that's, that's rubbish. Okay. And so the point is of a four word is that it's someone who's very, very influential that's giving their stamp of approval and recommendation in writing um, on your book, okay? And so um, that, that's a big deal, okay? If, 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 you know, because someone goes, well, Martin, I don't really know who you are. You're, you say it's good, but of course you're going to. Um, now he's saying, well, actually, Kevin Harrington says it's good, right? Like, yeah, okay. you know, and, and, and here it is. Now that's suddenly um, quite interesting. Yeah, so, so it's yeah. kind of like almost like boring authority from other people in your niche that they're saying like, yeah, he's not the only one saying he's great. I actually vetted him and he is great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's a little bit of extra effort, but it's, it's tremendously valuable. And again, you know, throughout this link at the bottom, smartsc.com um, forward slash geek. Um, if you want to actually check out the, the book funnel, grab yourself a, a free copy of the book so that you can actually see the book and see what we're talking about. So then testimonials. Okay, so testimonials help sell your book as well. And I've got a lot of testimonials, which actually I haven't just got, I haven't got round to putting them on the website, which is terrible. But, um, you know, I've got a lot of testimonials, but they came from contacting trusted people, both before I'd published and after I'd published, um, and asking them if they'd like a free copy of my book in exchange for a review, shipping them a copy. Um, in some way, whether it's a physical copy or a digital copy. Okay, when before you've got the physical copies available, you have to send them a PDF. I was really uncomfortable doing that because you, it only takes one person to leak that and then your book's out there in the world for free. And so I recommend using a free watermarking service, just Google it, uh, before sending and putting a unique watermark on each PDF that you send out, okay, with the name of the person you're sending it to in this watermark. And so then if it does leak out, you know exactly who leaked it and they're probably less likely to leak it, okay? Or you can send them a physical copy. Even if it's printed out on paper, you can send them a physical copy because it, they're not gonna just scan that in and put that online because no one's got time for that. I love that. Uh, that is super smart because it's kind of like showing the people, <laughs> showing the person that like if they're sharing it, their name will be out there and that's like, you know, an immediate smear or immediate preventer from them of doing anything shady. That's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And then make sure you follow up with each person, right? Every person you've gone to the effort of sending a copy to, right? Uh, make sure you follow up with them to, so that you can at least get to the point where they've either given you a testimonial or they've said no, right? Um, they're super busy, right? People need prompting. But if in the first part they've said, yes, I'll, you know, I'm happy to read your book and give you a testimonial um, on it if I like it, then, you know, the very least they can do is say, you know, here's a testimony or sorry, I can't give it to you because I'm just too busy. But at least get to that point. It's very easy just to go, oh, I don't want to trouble them and, and, and go dark. And, you know, they're unlikely to reach out to you. So you need to be vigilant because testimonials, again, they're recommendations um, that, that people pay attention to, your customers will pay attention to. Woo! And then finally, selling your book. Okay, so 
what you want to be doing is you want to be on your sales page, leveraging your forward and your testimonials. You want to be showing off the, the book structure that we've already written and telling them a little bit about who you are and why you wrote the book. You can get a bit fancy like I did and re record a video. Um, I very much recommend watching that video as well, folks. The link below uh, will take you to that um, page eventually um, because actually I go through some really, really cool maths where just change, just inc improving um, your business just by 1%. And I go in, I go through an e-commerce, typical e-commerce flow where people click on your ad, they go to your website, they buy something and hopefully they come back and buy again. Um, I, I go through this process and actually do the maths on if you improve just one or two of the steps by just 1%, a tiny amount, one person out of 100, um, how it actually results in an extra 180% revenue. It's absolutely nuts, the compounding effect. So I highly recommend looking at that. Um, but on this page, essentially, you're, you're showing your forward, your testimonies, your book structure, who you are, why you wrote the book. Again, I recommend Kartra for doing this. It makes it really, really easy. Okay, It's a drag and drop um, website maker. Um, and that's what I use. There, you can get it there. Um, and what it allows you to do is to put in upsells um, uh, like after the, the sales page, which, you know, a certain amount of your audience may want to learn from you in a different way. And so um, I run live calls every two Mondays. I call them expert calls. I get awesome people in like Efat um, and uh, countless others. I think we've got something like 40 hours of content now in our archives because we've been doing it for over a year and a half. Um, I, I offer that in my upsell and say like, hey, if you know, if you want a little bit more than my words in a book, um, you can come and join me live. OK, and so um, a certain percentage of people also decide to take that offer, which, again, helps, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, balance out the costs that I've incurred. Um, because ultimately, I want to just get this copy into the hands of like every digital marketer, every entre digital entrepreneur out there. But if I was to do that on my own, you know, I'd be bankrupt. And so my goal is to get it into as many hands as possible without losing money. I'm not actually so bothered about the profit. I believe if you put enough value out there in the world, you know, it'll come back to you at some point. No sweat. So I link Kartra. This is the other reason for it. I link Kartra to a Shopify store on like a free plan, um, which I use as my like back end. Okay. That's where that's my CRM. That's where I can see the orders and Shopify links to like absolutely everything, um, which is great. The other reason I like Kartra is you can set up like an affiliate um, program so that other people can recommend your book and, and get a bit of commission for doing so. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I would encourage you to model your funnel on mine, right? And so the link um, is below. You can just go through it, right? You can go through it um, as a as a customer and see, you know, screenshot each page, see where I position things. I'm not saying it's the best funnel in the world, but it's, it's pretty good. It's served me well. Um, and then some extras. Uh, so if you've ever done like a video online or a talk or some kind of screen share or anything like that, don't forget you can transcribe that talk, right? And turn that into a chapter. And then if in that talk, you're talking about say slides or anything, you know, that's up on the screen or whatever, you can just take screenshots of that and include that in the chapter as images. And so one of the chapters in the book is literally a talk that I did in Vancouver called How to Sell um, Over $2 Million with the Leggings. I think that's what it's called. Um, and, and so I did that live in Vancouver in front of an audience, but then I just took the video, uploaded that to rev.com, got it transcribed, and then had my, um, I had my uh, staff member just put in photos where, you know, screenshots of the presentation at the times where it made sense to, when I'm like saying, look, so you can see from the screen, you know, that you put that in there. Um, you can show off what your book looks like long before you've got a physical book. Um, and the way you do that is you go onto Google and you search for book mockup PSD, which is the uh, is photo, means Photoshop uh, files. And so there's free things on there where all you need is a cover. You upload, you put the cover into it, you drop it into that, and it, it makes like a book mockup. This stack of books over here on the right hand side of the screen, that's a digital mockup of my book. Okay. Um, the one that I'm holding in my hand, that's a real book. Um, in fact, that's not a real book. It is a real physical thing that I'm holding in my hands, but actually I got that from the book printer and it's 300 blank pages at that point because I hadn't finished the book, but I needed something to hold. Oh, showbiz and the secrets, eh? Um, and so that's essentially it. But um, if you want any more info, you can always email me at martin at smartdesk.com. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and what I'll do is those kind of questions, I'll take that as learnings and may well even produce some videos on it if enough people want to 
learn a little bit more. So my final slide here, my gift to you, we've talked about it all the way through. I'd encourage you to pick up a copy of the book. It's free, just cover, cover shipping. Um, shipping costs, or almost all of the shipping costs, it's like six bucks. You're gonna get a 300 page, um, highly reviewed, highly recommended, Kevin Harrington forward um, book that I'm extremely proud of and I dictated whilst walking the dog over about 13 to 13 to 15 separate dog walks. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So uh, before we dive into uh, audience questions, and if you guys have some questions, Martin, stop sharing your screen. Uh, and if you guys have some questions, let me know and we will uh, we'll grab. And uh, but I want I'm going to ask you questions and let's see if you can give me like a 30 seconds response answer for that so that we can kind of cover all the self publishing. So sure. is uh, Screenver, Screenver, is that the self-publishing, is that the way to self-publish? Scrivener is a way of producing a book in a format that um, enables you to then publish that book. Whether you're publishing that book on um, Amazon or whether you're sending it to a book publisher or wherever it is, they require it in a certain file, not just like .doc, doc, like a Word document. And so Scrivener enables you to output that book um, you, you write it once, you put it in there once, and you can output it as an EPUB or a PDF or a other one that I forget the name of, um, output. Okay, so let's talk about what is, what is self-publishing? What does that mean? So self-publishing means rather than getting in touch with a publishing company, right, one of those guys that gets, you know, one of those companies that gets hundreds of book submissions every day and treats you like, you know, dirt. Um, Self-publishing means actually putting copies of a book out into the world um, off using your own energy and resources. And so um, in, in my case, self-publishing meant taking my book, reaching out, doing, you know, phoning up some local um, print houses, book printers in the UK, because I wanted to actually, you can do it through Amazon, right? You can do it through, um, you can upload it on there and they'll do the handle, all the printing and all of the shipping out. What I wanted to do was I wanted to fulfill it uh, locally um, so that I could just be a little bit more hands-on. These books go out in paper envelopes, right? Not plastic packaging, right? There's no plastic. They go out in paper, environmentally friendly envelopes. I try as much as I can to sign, like, um, to sign each copy. I like that personal touch. It takes me an extra 30 seconds, um, but I try and do that. And so I can't do that if I do it through Amazon. So the way I did it, I wrote, phoned up these book printing companies and um, got a good price. And then they send you a bunch of samples, typically. Um, you pick one, you haggle with them as much as you possibly can, and then um, you, you, know, you end up with a box with like the minimum of quantity. I think it's like 100, 150 or something. The more you order, the cheaper it gets. Um, but my first order, I think, was about 150 books. You get a ginormous thing. The postman hates your guts because 100 <laughs> books is really heavy. They're like, what did I do to deserve this? Um, and then, yeah, you've got the books and you can just ship it out. As I said, Shopify integrates with like every shipping service. In my case, it was with Royal Mail, but you could you could integrate with like FedEx, DHL, USPS, like whoever your shipping at, um, you know, company is, you can do it that way. Or if you don't care about the personal touch, you could literally just upload it to Amazon, loads of YouTube videos on that. And um, then if someone orders your a digital copy on Amazon, you can give it to them. They order a physical copy. Amazon will physically print it out and ship it to that customer. So that brings us to kind of like, what are the best uh, self-publishing companies out there? And are there any self-publishing companies that you should avoid? Um, so I, that's a hard one for me to answer. I use a company called Book Printers UK, um, which are in the UK and they print books. Um, <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> and, uh, they were the best ones I found. Their customer service was fantastic. Um, uh, you know, I, I even had them because I really wanted photos of my book and I couldn't wait two days for them to ship, the, ship it to me. I actually had one of their guys. I said, hey, you've got the book before you ship it to me, that little sample one. Can you take oh. some photos just of you holding it so I can visualize it and send me some photos of him? It was a blank book, remember that first yeah. one? Yeah. <laughs> like, like this and he, obviously we know that he's just looking at a blank book so i can't talk to other self um i mean then it's not even a self-publishing company you're the one that are doing the self-publishing um you just need a company that can print books for you gotcha so uh that brings us to what is the cost of self-publishing versus and the other methods 
Well, I've never done the other method, right? So I've never gone with a publisher. I, mean, I imagine the cost with an actual publisher is heartache, heartbreak, <laughs> going through hundreds and hundreds of publishers and being told to F off and um, maybe eventually finding one where they say, ah, we'll take a punt on you, but we want 90% of the royalties. Right. Um, you know, so <laughs> yeah. uh, that was kind of some of the thinking that I had with um, wanting to self-publish. Um, so when you self-publish, obviously you get volume discounts for book printers, like the more you order at a time, the cheaper it is. Um, but at first you don't know how it's going to go. So you can place orders gradually and sort of build up. Um, and yeah, I mean, so it depends on who you found. I, I think um, when you're ordering it in large quantities, you could probably get the cost down to under $2 a book, maybe. I've not ordered in that kind of quantity. I think for me, it's about in dollars, maybe $5 a book, something like yeah. that. So the book itself, just to print, is like $5. And then it costs me um, money to ship and the money for that environmentally friendly envelope and, and all the rest of it on top of it. But, yeah, you know enough people take the upsells that I just about break even and really that's all my goal I just want I want as many people to hold my business card as as possible and to and to get value from it right and and my book as well I snuck in a couple of chapters on like um things you can do to make the world a better place things you can do to 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 make to sleep better yourself to make better decisions (laughs) yourself um I couldn't resist uh in a book about e-commerce I still threw those things in but that's because you know that that's I want to help people make money, but I want to help them make money ethically in a way that improves the world, which is why my next e-commerce brand has like a charitable element that's completely plastic free. Um, you know, it, it has like no carbon fiber footprint. We're going to be, oh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, could, I could talk for hours about it, yeah. but it's an ethical company that will be very successful. So, um, you know, we we're talking about like creating the book and writing the book is one thing, but then there is the marketing of the book, right? Getting it into as many hands as possible. Do you have any uh, any tips outside from like reaching to your own audience? Are there any other tips where you can expand the reach and get it into even more hands? Sure. So um, affiliates are always good. So people that uh, that you know. Uh, so there's so an affiliate is someone who in your space has an audience. Okay. So um, it could be someone that has a large YouTube channel or a blog or um, is a coach or a teacher or um, has a course or you know, it's, or a Facebook group, right? So it's finding those people, getting into a conversation with them and, and you know, sending them a copy of your book um, and saying, hey, you know, if, you're, if you like it, would you, would you be prepared to share a link to it? Um, so the better the book, the, the easier that is. Um, so that's a great way with affiliates. Obviously with your own audience, um, it's really, really helpful. Um, but yeah, just, talking about your book, all of those people that reviewed your book as well, um, just asking them, hey, would you mind, you've got a copy of the book now, would you mind uh, sharing that, just doing a post on your social media, just saying, look, I just picked up a copy of Martin's book, I love it. On that final slide on my um, my thing, um, Depeche Mandalia, he's like a phenomenally um, successful, phenomenally smart Facebook advertiser, he's a, he runs a Facebook advertising agency, he's a Facebook partner and that, he's spent millions and millions of millions of millions of dollars. You know, that's a post from him where he said, finally got to read it, Martin. It's superb. So, so he's posted this on his Facebook. Right. The book kind of does it in justice. It's a manual and reference guide for e-com store owners and so much more. I learned some great tips on negotiation by Axe and CRM. Congrats. Uh, you know, he's just posted on that. And there's countless more guys that I've just, you know, sent a copy or they bought a copy who have just posted that on their social media. And so you get this sort of snowball effect as well. But any, any way that you currently sell things online, that would be a way <laughs> should work for books so is there um the self-publishing close the door to traditional publishing uh in the future i heard that myth I somewhere no I, I don't think it does because i think that the only in my, in my research again you know i didn't even go down the publish route so so take this with a grain of salt but my understanding is that like a publisher wants exclusivity to your book right so every book the copy that's sold they get a certain amount of royalties they don't want to compete with other publishers they're happy to compete with you typically, right? The fact that your book's already out there may even help you a little bit when talking to publishers because you can say, look, it's not just a book and a concept. I've actually got, you know, Some this sales. many um, yeah, sales yeah, out there. I've got this many testimonials. So maybe you should take me a little bit more seriously. So it could actually go the other way and help you. So what do you think uh, about, you know, respect and author? Because a lot of people think, well, if I'm not published by 
publishing house, then I'm kind of like, you know, it's not a really a respectable way for a first time author to be putting his own stuff out there. What do you think about that? I think that's that's bullshit. Um, I think <laughs> I think that um, I don't think I've ever read um, a book and gone, oh, no, I, I you know, they've got some good words in there, but, um, you know, it's not published by Penguin, so I'm not yeah. going to take them seriously. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I would I would pay far more attention to recommendations, testimonials, forewords, um, flicking through the book. Um, you know, if it's on Amazon, they give you little previews, the, the back of the book, which is really important real estate to, to sell the book. Um, you know, I pay way more attention to that um, uh, and, and understanding who it is the author is and, and, you know, why they're qualified to talk to me. So let's talk about the Amazon bestseller for a second. Before we started, uh, before we started our show, you and I were joking about the fact that you can become an Amazon seller. There's an article out there, guys, if you want to. How do I become an Amazon bestseller uh, in five minutes and three bucks? And it's basically this guy who took a picture of his foot. The book was called Putting My Foot Down. He put it up on Amazon, had three of his friends buy the book. And in the first hour, I think it reaches some categories top. Take a screenshot of that, and here I am, a best-selling author. And a lot of people who don't know that story, right? They kind of like geek out or like, oh my god, look at me, I'm an Amazon bestseller. What? The, so two questions. One, you and I know this stuff. Is there any value really in being an Amazon bestseller? And the second one, I know you did not go the Amazon route, but is there any value because of Amazon's reach and marketplace and discoverability and search and all that stuff? Is there any value in putting your book on Amazon? Um, sure. So there's absolutely value in putting your book on Amazon and um, in, in many ways, particularly if you're doing like, um, you know, like a funnel similar to mine, if you put it on Amazon at a much higher price point, not only will you get sales, say 20 bucks, right? Not only will you get sales at 20 bucks, um, you can sort of point out um, on your website that, by the way, I've al I'm already getting people buying my book at $20 on Amazon and check out the reviews from those happy people. And so it sort of helps um, reinforce how valuable it is that they can get it for free. Right. Okay. We're not tricking anyone here. This is it's just literally the point. And if they come through your funnel, then at the very least, you know, you, you've, you're just a little bit closer and more hands on in terms of the people that are buying your things and you can ensure that the quality is there and stuff. I like in that. Terms of the best, the, the, in terms of the best selling status, status, um, I mean, I, I think, I think we see it a lot, but it probably still holds value when someone goes, I'm a best selling author or an internationally best selling <laughs> author. I think that still um, holds weight because the majority of people know, uh, don't realize that literally as long as your book got to number one in a tiny little category on Amazon for 10 seconds, <laughs> yeah. that's enough to classify you as a best-selling author. Um, what, what, what did you call it when we were talking? Was it like, the, what was the category? Well, you were talking about that person that said they had a picture of their foot. Yeah, and, and you said... Uh... So it's like, <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe he'd sort of come out in the category of, um, you know, Nail something. Middle middle <laughs> toe nail art or something, you know, people that enjoy art on your on the nail of your <laughs> third toe or something. You know, like a tiny yeah. little category that is easy to win at. But um, you know, whereas if they're bestsellers in like business books, you're like, hmm, okay, that's you know, it's a big category with right. big competition, good job. So but most people I'm sure don't delve into that. Um, I just try and be authentic all the way through. Um, with everything I do, because I mean, the customers I'm selling to, and and, and wanting to speak to, they're smart people. They see through smoke and mirrors like that, and, yeah. and so you might as well be authentic and um, you know do, do it the hard way. But the hard way is normally the best way. Yeah, and actually, the way that you described it today is not so hard at all. Um, mm. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, you know, walk the dog, get in shape, and write your book. I think that should be the title of your next book. <laughs> Walk the dog, get in shape, write your next book. Um, a book about how I wrote the book, yeah. <laughs> exactly, right? Let me teach you how to make a million dollars by placing ads for $5 in a uh, newspaper. Send me $5 yeah. and I'll tell you how I made it. Uh, <laughs> so, Stuart, you had a question. You want to jump in, Stuart? You can unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah. Uh, okay. I keep myself muted so I've got a big fan in the background. I hope it's not interrupting things. Oh, you're fine. Um, no, I was curious, uh, in your publishing method, uh, method you're using a, a true 
book format, book publishing. I mean, you're um, you're doing it the traditional way. But what do you think of Kindle as a way of publishing A and B since you've now got it down to a manuscript uh, recording that chapter by chapter and compiling it into a um, paid verbal format although Kindle will do that for you um, I think that's I think that's a great question. Um, so definitely, you know, there's 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 definitely uh, people that have reached out to me and said they would prefer it in an electronic version, in an ebook version. Um, I've held off doing that for as long as possible. I'm sure the ebook's going to come out anytime soon. And the reason is, the second you've got a digital version out there, that first copy that goes out into the world, now it's on the internet. Now you can't get it back, and someone somewhere is eventually going to rip that and put it online. Okay, for free. And so I wanted to avoid that for as long as possible. It also comes a little bit from my own personal preference that, um, uh, you know, like I like a physical book. I think a physical book holds more value. I wanted to ship something physical to uh, to customers. I, you know, I feel like that's a little bit more personal. It sits on their bookshelf, you know, like up there. Um, it sits on their bookshelf and it's, um, you know, and it's kind of like in uh, it, around them you know, for a long time. And I just, you know, call me woo woo, but um, that, that was kind of what I was going for. Now, of course the ebook's on its way. Now you asked about the audio book. So this little thing here is um, like a little sound booth that you put a microphone in here and then you sort of speak into it like this and it kind of cuts out all background noise, like your fans, Stuart. And um, so I bought that. And uh, now bearing in mind, I've already said every word in my book, okay? I've already trans uh, transcribed it, and, but that's, you know, that's, that's out and about, there's cars driving past, you know, there's words that were, just, were meant for my dog, not for the book and things like that. And so it absolutely needs to be um, uh, re-recorded, okay? So, um, but now, <laughs> Now, for me, that becomes quite an effort because now I'm not just ad-libbing like you and I, right? Like, I've already spoken to answer your question probably for four minutes, okay? I've written half a chapter talking to you if this was transcribed. But now that if I'm reading my book, right, verbatim, if I'm actually reading my book and um, for an audible thing, that becomes an effort for me again. And so um, it's on... It, loads of people want the audible, audible book okay and you have two options either you record it yourself so it's in your voice which i think is is way more um, um intimate right so people are hearing your voice and so on um or you can team up with a uh, you can either pay someone or you can team up with um a professional uh, sound artist or whatever they call narrator voice um, yeah, yeah, and, and and you split the royalties on the audio book with, with that person. I wanted it to be in my voice, uh, potentially to my detriment. So I think I've, I've recorded maybe three chapters at this point in, in Audible. I fully intend to have an Audible version of the book. It will be a, a, t a case when I have, um, you know, some spare time because, um, you know, it's, it's 13 times... 40 minutes of of recording assuming i don't mess up and i will definitely mess up so uh, i have a second question if you don't mind be fun um okay. secondly when you were talking about your uh, having a transcribed and then more or less edited by someone who was not a professional editor did you find that you had to go back through and perhaps separate out paragraphs, uh, re-paragraph, paginate it, whatever? No. Um, so on the YouTube videos, you'll find like how to set up Scrivener so that it, it things like, um, like when you've got this, um, the, 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 the pages that are on this side have a bigger gap closer to the spine and the ones on this side have a gap on so one's on the left hand side one's on the right hand side all that stuff you can just set up in Scrivener um so I just had my my, my member my staff member Grace had never used Scrivener before I just had her watch some videos she got up to speed on it very very quickly in terms of her editing um you know I mean she's she's got a good grasp of the English language um she'd written a few blog posts before that was good enough for me she knows how I speak as well which kind of helps a bit um 
but uh, no, that was that was good enough for me. She could always listen to the actual raw um, audio that I, you know, had transcribed if she wanted to get tone or inference or something. But uh, no, she did a great job. Um, and uh, yeah, so and you can always do some sanity checking of the Google Doc, right? Like if you if you're worried about certain words maybe coming out wrong, like maybe it was transcribed, like you say the word there and and they they put in the wrong one, like T H E I R T H E I. Uh, yeah, or T H E Y R E and all that sort of stuff, the different spelling of it. You can just do a find and replace and just quickly scan through those um, and see that. They had great um, problem. I can't remember what the word was, but there was one word I said quite a lot, which they kept quite sort of the transcriber misspelled. It's just, you know, find and replace all. Two seconds. Good enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Do -do. <laughs> so I love this one. We got like five more minutes. Jen is here. Jen already published her kids book uh, and she has some questions about uh, publishing on Amazon. Jen, hop on in. Hey, Martin. How's it going? It's going good. Thanks, Jen. How are you? Good. Hey, Fat. Nice to see you. Likewise. I love what you're doing, P.S. I, I just always love that you got you bring so much value. It's totally awesome. So I'm sitting here, Martin, listening to you. And although I think a book similar to yours is in my future, um, what's in my immediate past, and I'm actually about to release the second one uh, in two weeks, is my um, character called Yehudi Who, and um, he is a children's um, picture book. So you know we do a little bit different as far as like publishing goes, and we also self-published, but we paid for um you know a couple thousand copies of the book and that sort of thing um my question to you was um about amazon well one thing i wanted to say thank you for the thought on the forward because i haven't thought about a forward for a kid's book because you don't usually see them and i think it's epic brilliant i'm not going to cuss on your show if I, but um i think it's totally awesome and so <laughs> i don't know the rules I know the rules. So, um, <laughs> so I am definitely um, now thinking about a forward, which is rad. Um, but I wanted to ask about Amazon ads and if you had used them and how they had worked for you and uh, you know that sort of thing. So remember, this particular book is not on Amazon, right? Like uh, at the moment, um, and uh, it, it, I intend it to be. I intend it to be on Amazon. So I'll give you a little fun backstory about um, about me. So about six years ago, as a little side hustle, I created this little system with um, with some outsource workers to um, create and publish children books, uh, children's books on Amazon. And we had two thousand five hundred books published on Amazon, um, and they're all nonfiction, like you know books and um and so we so we had those it was great it was churning out a few thousand dollars a month um on autopilot it's the it's the only true auto automatic money printing business i've ever had right and um uh you know after five years of riding that train amazon saw some issue with it and um and sort of said hey you know you're banned and so at the moment what we're we're in the process of doing is is finding a way to publish this book um, because, you know, we've been tired by that business, which I had, you know, I didn't write a single word in that business either. and I didn't just transcribe, you know, so I'm finding a way to get my book online. So I can't really speak much about Amazon ads for books. Now, we've used Amazon plenty of times uh, and the ads for selling physical products on Amazon. Um, and I mean, you know, these are higher product, higher cost, like higher, um, higher value products. Um, but typically most advertisers come in, they, they run an auto ad, um, narrow it down as much as they can, run an auto ad, see what people are searching for, uh, are searching for to then find your product and then begin to create what's known as a manual ad where they're searching just for those terms that the auto ad has shown to be the terms that find your book. Um, and then they do a whole bunch of stuff about getting reviews and getting out the rankings and, and stuff like that. I would potentially, if you're looking to get your book out there, I'd potentially, and you've got the funds to do so, I'd potentially look um, to a book consultant. Um, and there's a few out there. There's a guy named Trevor Crane, who um, he's not cheap, but he's fantastic. Um, who um, who I, I interviewed him a while ago. Um, he's, he's a really good um, guy to know and he helps you um, become a bestseller on Amazon and then beyond. And I think oh. he's going to 
Yeah, we're actually, we we leveraged and, and to, I know we're running out of time, but to maybe answer back to Stuart's question a little bit, and I don't know if it works the same in every genre, but we leveraged Kindle um, for pre-launch of our book last year and our first book. And we uh, actually ended up making the top, we were in the top five kids books for three months in a row and the top four kids books um, for four months. And we made... I think the payout on that was $2,500 or $3,000 a month um, to be in that top spot. And we had, we got like 240 reviews and um, I mean, amazing shit happened because we utilized Kindle. Um, mm-hmm. And then we also were able to do a Spanish version without paying for a hard copy Spanish version, which is freaking sweet um, because we were able to expand that audience. And the other thing that Kindle did for us that was interesting was gave us insight into places that we were popular that we didn't really think about. So like we had a spike in Japan and we were like, Japan, like, you know, whatever. And so then you think about like, okay, well, how can I reach more people in Japan? Right. Because obviously it, there's some attraction there. So I think, you know, for us anyway, Kindle has been great. Yeah. Uh, and definitely, definitely recommend it. It's, um, you know, it's a great place to get out there. Just be aware that even on Kindle, it, you feel it, you know, it's, a, it's digital. The second something's online and it's digital, it can be ripped, but you can sort of, you know, um, it takes solace, I guess, in the fact that the people ripping your book probably would have never paid for it anyway. So they were never your customers. Um, <laughs> and the more people that have your book, they might talk about it and someone might buy your book. I know Tim Ferriss went through this when he found a pirated copy of 4-Hour Workweek and he went off the rails and, and then his friend talked to him and said, you know, these guys wouldn't have bought it from you anyway. So chill out. You know, right. You know, it's free publicity type thing. No, and that's the kind of book, like I have that book on my shelf and it's all tabbed and written in the margins and shit. Like I wanted a copy of that book, you know? So, you know, there's value in having the hard copy. All right, cool. Well, sweet. Thanks, Martin. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Yeah, I love it. So, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce your name. You're really quiet, Eva. There you go. I'm muting myself so that I don't go into the wormhole and then I forget to unmute. Um, so Man Sebria, I think, I don't know how to pronounce your name. She says, this is awesome stuff. Thank you, Martin. Um, fantastic. So guys, if you want Martin's, uh, book the same way that I have with a dedication, right, Martin, cause you're going to dedicate it to them. Um, <laughs> all I have to go is, uh, I'm that geek.com forward slash live. You'll see this exact image right there. Click on it and you're going to go straight into Martin's uh, funnel and you can model it and you can see how he does his things and you can definitely get the book, leave a review because it's a fantastic book. Um, and, uh, and I think everybody here, everyone who wants to take action, because we get so much great information and then we're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then nothing happens, right? So if you actually want to take action, um, we have a place for that. It's called amdatgeek.com forward slash join. And we're going to take action on this together. So if you want to have your book done, if you uh, want to see what it actually looks like, right, this one, then hop on in, grab the book, read the stuff, and then come model it together. So Martin, thank you so much. The, definitely third time's a charm. <laughs> so glad to have you. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for the questions. It's great. This is a great um, sort of surroundings to be in, having you know friendly faces. Um, Jen only put a couple of fingers up at me like twice, which I think is pretty good. So um, I'm kidding, of course. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really great to have you know friendly faces around whilst you're presenting and stuff. It's always nice to to know that there's someone out there listening, right? So um, I hope that helps you guys. Um, I'm gonna. I'm also gonna get this presentation online at some point, so I'll, I'll send you the link to to that, um, Ifa, and you can share with the audience if they want it. That'd be fantastic. So thanks again, guys, for joining us. Uh, next week we are going to talk about selfies. What do your selfies say about you? It's really interesting, um, and we're gonna talk about it from a PR point of view. So hop on in, join us. Make sure this is in your calendars. Thank you again, Martin. You are fantastic with all the value that you're generating. I mean, this should have been a paid class and we just got it here. So thank you so much again. Wait, I'm not getting paid? What? Really? You're not getting paid? Whoa, wait, wait, wait. 
<laughs> I know. This was behind the scenes, something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. And we'll see you in another episode of I'm That Geek in two weeks' time. Bye. Quick, quick.